Hey everyone, I'm Paul. I'm a type 1 diabetic and I've been diabetic for going on 22 years. Uh, I get asked a lot of questions, you know, as someone who hunts in the backcountry and has type 1 diabetes um, about how do I do that? How do I spend so many days in the backcountry while managing my disease? Um, some people, you know, who are newly diagnosed may ask how they get into backcountry hunting um, with this new diagnosis and this kind of change of lifestyle. Or, you know, it's from folks who hunt or want to hunt with, you know, a hunting partner who is type 1 diabetic, but they're not sure quite how to approach being a good hunting partner uh, to help them, you know, succeed in the backcountry as well. So after talking with the crew, we decided to do a sort of diabetic bag dump. You know, we're going to, you know, it's a, a rough look at the, the equipment that I carry. You know, I carry the same things in the backcountry as everyone else as far as, you know, a sleep system, a food system, uh, all those things. But there are extra considerations that I have to take into account that the average hunter does not. So there's two main considerations that we're going to talk about in the context of diabetes, which are diabetes supplies, you know, what that stuff looks like, what I carry with me in the backcountry. We'd say this is probably for like a four or five day trip, maybe a long weekend. Um, and then your food considerations. The rest of the stuff is kind of personal preference for whatever you decide to use for your other sleep and cook systems and all that stuff. Um, but we'll set those aside to get started. So here's my diabetes supplies, bright red bag, easy to find, easy to locate my backpack. Um, if I was to drop it, you know, I know where it is at all times. This is my lifeline in the backcountry. Next, this is a day's worth of food. It's about 4,500 calories. I know what my body burns, and that's gonna change from person to person, um, you know, especially with diabetes and especially how you treat your diabetes. So I have an insulin pump and I use a continuous glucose monitor. The continuous glucose monitor gives me blood sugar readings throughout the day, and I can track that on a graph on my phone as well as on my pump. So when I'm hiking with a heavy load, I know that I'm going to be burning more sugar. I have the flexibility to adjust my insulin, um, but I also want to make sure I have the food on board to accommodate and account for that activity. Um, so there's a good mix of things in here, you know, oatmeal, like I said, bars, meat sticks, uh, like energy chews, some quick sugars, as well as a more complex uh, backpacking meal. This one is pad thai, and I like pad thai a ton. One, it's just one of my favorite meals, just out and about, but the peanut butter is a good source of protein that helps stabilize my blood sugars and doesn't spike my numbers so much. But there's also carbs and good fats in there that just I've noticed personally do really well for me at the end of the end of a long day to keep my blood sugars stable. But that is kind of what a day's worth of food looks like. You know, there's lots of whole food bars, just try to keep it really diverse and have the flexibility to you know, adjust and accommodate different blood sugars. The bag of life. This is all the stuff that keeps me vertical, keeps me going, um, and is, yeah, kind of the essence of uh, what diabetes is. I'm not a doctor. I've just been diabetic for 22 years. So a lot of this is stuff that I've learned from my own personal experiences. Um, something I would recommend, you know, both with your food and your insulin delivery um, in the backcountry is don't let the first time you experience these things, you know, a backcountry meal and ac uh, accounting for your insulin in the backcountry, be the first time you're in the backcountry. I would recommend, you know, working out or trying to, to train in a way that simulates what you'd experience in the backcountry and understand how your body reacts. Um, it's the same with the food. I wouldn't let the first time you have a certain type of food be when you're six miles in. When you're home, try if you're trying a new food try it there see how your body reacts to that kind of food and see if it's a good fit for you so this is what my supplies look like first i always carry an extra sensor so this is that continuous glucose monitor so this is the applicator um, you know right now mine's on my leg it lasts for 10 days uh, but sometimes they sweat off um, i use a, a special tape which is right here to help keep that on my skin better. Um, but yeah, I always carry an extra um, just to make sure that I know what my blood sugars are at all times. Knowledge is power, information is power, and knowing what your blood sugars are is the best way to make educated and good decisions about your diabetes. 
I also carry a backup pen of insulin. Now this is called Lantus. It's a long lasting insulin. So I talked about the basal rate on my insulin pump where it gives me a little bit every hour. Say the battery on my insulin pump were to die or it was super hot and I sweat through all my supplies where I wasn't able to have my insulin pump attached anymore. I would use this long lasting insulin to take the place of my basal rate. So we'll go on to the insulin that I use in my insulin pump. I've got one of these little cases, it's called Frio. Um, but one of my big concerns is keeping my insulin at a good temperature. So in August, September, October, even early October, it can get really, really hot. And you don't want your insulin to get too warm. So these little cases are pretty cool. You can just dunk them in water and they kind of act like a cooling pack. Uh, it won't freeze your insulin, but just keeps it at a good temperature that, you know, if you're exposed in the high country, that this will help keep your insulin um, cool. And I'm still working on finding a great way to keep it warm enough in the late season. A few times while cat hunting and late season elk hunting, I've had my insulin pump shut down because it got too cold, which usually ends up with a hand warmer in a pocket, try to stuff it into a glove, uh, find a way to warm that pump back up. But uh, for keeping things cool for an archery elk hunt, this little pouch is awesome. And yeah, I used it for the first time last season and was super impressed. Um, but yeah, that's just a vial of insulin that what I'll do is I'll draw out of here and that goes into my insulin pump. And that'll usually last me um, anywhere from three to five days. So, but that's, that's where I keep it. It lives in there. Um, if you are not a diabetic and you're hunting with a diabetic, um, this is like a general rule. It's not necessarily hard and fast, but probably 99.99% .99 of the time, you shouldn't have to worry about ever touching your hunting partner's insulin. Um, by the time it would get to that point, most times uh, they'll be able to get it under control. Um, the most common thing you'd see in the backcountry would be a low blood sugar, which would be treated with uh, a quick acting sugar or carbohydrate. So just something to keep in mind, but that's the insulin. These are my, they're called sets. Um, and it's like an all-in-one applicator, but there's a tubing, a needle, and an adhesive pad that connects to the reservoir that goes in the pump where the insulin is. And this is how I get my insulin. So there's a needle uh, that's got a catheter around it. You know, I unwrap it, hook it up, and so I'll go through the tube. And whether it's on my thigh or on my stomach, um, that's typically where I put my sights. But this thing kind of cocks back and then you squeeze the sides and it shoots it in. Once that's in, you pull the needle out and that catheter is left behind. Like I said, one of these will typically last me three to five days, um, but it varies depending on the location, you know, how much rubbing it might experience, as well as how much I'm sweating. Um, I sweat a lot, especially when I'm hiking in early to mid season. Um, so I like to have some extras. I usually don't use them all, but it's better safe than sorry. So I try and keep, if I'm going out for four days, I try to have three to four, one for every day. A lot of times like the waist belt on your backpack can cause rubbing. Um, so three to four, you know, or one per day, uh, depending on the hunt. So I've been super happy with these, but always carry some extras. So these are the reservoirs. This is where the insulin goes. So I will draw insulin from the vial with this syringe. So there's a syringe and then the actual needle portion of it is separate. So you take them apart, put them together, use that to draw insulin out of the vial that we had in that black Frio case. Um, and then it goes into this reservoir. That goes in the insulin pump. This reservoir gets connected to the site and that is how the insulin gets pumped from the pump to me keeps me upright. So I usually keep, if I'm gonna be out for four days, if one of these last three to five, I'll bring two um, the syringes to kind of save some weight and space and not make so much trash um, because I'm not using this syringe for an injection into my body that I'll bring one syringe and one needle attachment. Um, I can reuse that 
just keep it all together. And when I'm done, I put it back in my bag. The last thing I keep in there is a glucagon emergency kit. And this is essentially the most emergency sugar you can give a diabetic who's experiencing uh, hypoglycemia or a low blood sugar. Uh, basically, it's a syringe that has a liquid in it and there's a vial with a powder. And so in an emergency situation, you would put the syringe into the vial, squeeze in the liquid, swirl it around gently. You don't shake it, just give it a swirl till it's mixed up. You'd redraw it and give it to your hunting partner. Um, I've only used glucagon once in my 22 years and my roommate had to give it to me once, uh, but I've never needed it in the backcountry. Uh, and I usually am able to stay on top of my blood sugars before that happens. Uh, but it's always good to have one of these. This is super fast acting uh, and really critical. It's a super life-saving uh, tool. And I recommend that any diabetic have one. And if you're hunting with a diabetic, uh, make sure you know where they keep this. Last couple things that I carry personally, I uh, will go over gummy bears are some of my favorites for treating a low blood sugar. Uh, when treating a low blood sugar, you want something that's fast acting, quick, simple sugars that don't take much effort to break down. Uh, so if I'm in a bad situation, I can sit down and just have something that's easy to get down that's going to deliver a lot of sugar quickly. Something like a Snickers is awesome, uh, maybe after the fact, after the initial treatment, because it's got peanuts, it's got nougat, it's you know a little more complex than a simple gummy bear. Um, that can help stabilize things a little bit. But typically, I'll just have a granola bar or half a granola bar, a little peanut butter. I mean, it depends on the situation. Um, you know, you gotta know your body, but keep simple sugars close at hand. I usually keep a packet of Skittles in my pocket and I keep a bigger bag of Skittles or gummy bears in the lid of my backpack. Uh, when I start a hike into a spot, I always let my hunting partners know where my quick sugars are. They need to know where that is. Um, it helps keep them at ease, letting them know so they don't get frantic if something were to happen. And it's just, it's just better for all parties involved. If you can keep people comfortable and just keep them informed, um, it's the best way to stay safe yourself and to keep them safe as well. I also carry a satellite communicator. If I was to get into an emergency situation um, where I couldn't get out on my own and I had to just kind of survive off of the supplies I had, I would want a way to be able to communicate, let someone know where I was, what my situation was and understand, you know, what my timeline looks like as far as receiving help or needing to get out. Um, I've not had to use it in that context before. It's usually just a peace of mind thing for friends and family. Hey, I made it okay. Numbers are good, whatever it may be, or hopefully it's big bull down. But that ability to communicate with the outside world, especially as a diabetic, um, you know, allows me to you know, go wherever I want and still be able to have that peace of mind that if something were to go wrong, I can reach someone. Um, but it also gives my family peace of mind and my friends. So I always keep a communicator. Uh, last, but certainly not least, is my trusty glucose monitor. I know I use a continuous glucose monitor that reads to my phone and reads to my pump, tracking my numbers. Um, but as with all electronics, things can die. Um, I usually carry a battery charger but say those things were to die, I still need to know what my blood sugars are. So I always have the manual um, glucose monitor. It's got strips, a finger sticker, the machine, and my lancets. So everything I need to be able to monitor my blood sugar manually. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, that's a, a high level overview. There's a lot, a lot, a lot to, you know, taking care of your diabetes in the backcountry. Um, but with the questions I get about how to get started or what do I need or what should I know, uh, this is kind of a general overview of what I carry with me in the backcountry. Diabetes doesn't have to slow you down. I've been hunting for the last 15 years. I've been hunting in the backcountry for the last five. And through all that time, I've had diabetes and it hasn't slowed me down. Uh, it doesn't have to slow you down either. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to talk about it with your hunting partners. You know, don't hide it. Share that information with the people you hunt with. Share that information with your family. Take care of yourself and good luck out there.